What's up, New England and beyond? The Room Podcast with two very special guests. I thought I was having one. Connor Matthews, the controller. But shameless Don Shanus is in the house with us also. Don, man, I'm going to skip you right away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we have sound for right now. I just want to make sure that we sound all right out there. Let me see. Right. So we have live. Right. I always have a, a worry that something's going to go wrong at the beginning of the show. When I used to do the show, I used to do it off the laptop. And as things updated on the laptop, I would lose, like, the feed and stuff. Yeah. And I started getting, like, oh, my God. And then, you know, a buddy... Help me purchase this, and I still get nervous. Right? Do you guys get nervous? Do you have like something that when you're on the way to the cage or something that you go? Yeah, I'm nervous. Something could go wrong or anything. Training wise, not really. I mean, obviously for before fights, everybody has a little bit of nerves. But I'm more nervous about the speech after the fight than I am going into. Oh, the no, I'm just scared <laughs> shit. Talking on the mic after. Is that right? I think that's, I don't really like public speech. I'm just so scared fight. to go out and then most of the day. The fear is gone. Yeah. I've never been scared for a podcast. I always get like kind of excited, like, oh, let's put it on the spot. Let's not think about anything beforehand. <laughs> Whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah. So Don, yeah. how'd you get connected with this dude? I mean, how did you how did you jump? Oh, actually you drove. So he jumped in your car. No, he, right? uh, he picked me up on the way. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Coming back, picked me up. But... Corona. Corona. Yeah. That's Corona. how you got to got you here. I gotta thank Corona for this because uh, <laughs> I was looking for training partners. I was doing some uh, fight club style training. Up in um, some place I can't really talk about because I'm not trying to get them in trouble. Mm -hmm. But uh, I hit up Joe Lozo and I'm like, yo, Joe, you training? He's like, nah, but I know some people that are. And uh, I'm like, well, I need some numbers. And he connected me with Connor and uh, Jesse. Yeah. So I got to thank Corona for this because I found one of the best training partners I could get right now. Yeah. Um, I spoke with you, you know, right before, you know, this all shit hit the fan. You were headlining the card on the, what, April 5th, I believe. We're all gone home, ready right to go. I, you were April, I was headlining. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, you were headlining. We were both headlining. We were both headlining. We're both going to be our first main events. Yeah, uh, my so second, sucked. but still, headlining the fucking cards. Cool. Yeah. I was excited for that. You know, it was going to be like my show, I feel like, and yeah, so I, mean, I never fought at Pins Up before, too, so I heard this kind of crazy, a little loud, small areas. So yeah. That would have been, cool, you know. More cool. intimate, like, more, like, exactly. compact, so, Especially yeah. when you have, like, your fan, your friends there, and you know exactly, they're going to hear them right around the cage. Yeah. So I thought that would have been pretty cool to hear. So, really cool. well, you were, you were right in the midst of uh, training camp, almost the tail end of it. I think we were two weeks out. Yeah. I mean, uh, ten days? Like, was it I think it was close? a little bit longer than that. Yeah, I, when, I found out on like the 14th or 15th. But there was yeah. rumblings of gyms yeah. closing, yeah. so you were like, ah, oh, like people were teetering on, is it gonna happen? Yeah. Isn't it? But to be that revved up, I mean, have you? Yeah, have you had? I mean, I would imagine you've had a longer career as far as pro. You've had fights fall through. But yeah. Get used to it. How about I mean, you? I've had an amateur man. I yeah. um just last year when I came back to fight and I was in Washington, uh, we had a fight. I scheduled for a fight one weekend. Um, and we had a snowstorm come through, got canceled. So the, so they said, all right, we're gonna just gonna reschedule the next week. They made me stay on weight for an entire oh, week. That sucks. So yeah, like that, you know you that make that sucks, cut. Yeah. So during that time, you know my immune system and everything's crashed. I got yeah. the flu, the worst flu I've ever had, like terrible. So then I, but so I was like, I was in bed sick until like Wednesday, Thursday. You know, I was fighting on a, um, on a Saturday, and I was like, well, I still took the fight. I still yeah. shouldn't have done it. So. But yeah, it's it sucks. I mean, Excellent. I've had it happen, and yeah, obviously fights always cancel, and it's the way it is. Now, opponents. you are uh, not only out of Lausanne's, you uh, Lakeville MMA, so and you, you teach there also. Yeah, I teach at Lakeville and I teach at Lausanne's. Um, so right, so teach at Lakeville. I I, I trained at Lakeville growing up. Uh, I was in high school. That's where I kind of really started doing MMA and jujitsu and rolling. Um, before that, I've been doing kempo, karate, everything you name it. I was trained at Bishops for a little while. Cool. That's where um, I started. Yeah, so That's I've, I've, I started. I've trained everywhere. Um, but yeah, Lakeville was like John Morando. That was like my guy you know, growing up. And he, me and him would literally drive from Lakeville. We'd finish class there and go up to Lausanne's and hit like the team sparring on like Tuesday nights back in the day, Tuesday, Thursday. So that's when I got into MMA and uh, I started linking up with Joe. So when I came back, I was like, you know, they had, it, the gym was taking off, you know, all the good guys, the sparring sessions there on Saturday were really good, all the pros. So I just, I'd kind of been over there ever since I came back. So Nice. Um, well, 
let's talk a little bit about Joe. I mean, he's got a corral. I don't want to say he's got an army. Yeah. Of uh, killers coming out of that gym. Yeah. When you first like got involved with him, I mean, he you know was deep in the UFC, a big name, you know, going to Hall of Fame, definitely. What was your mindset when? Oh my God, I'm I get to train with this guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, so I've known, him, I've seen him for a long time. He's always been somebody I know. Like I knew Joe before I even knew how big and famous he was. I met, I been to his class because I started trying to start training MMA just on like. I don't know why, like, I, my, like, I think I was, like, a kid who had, like, I was, like, punching holes in walls and stuff like yeah. that, and my parents and my brother's like, you should go try this martial arts stuff, try to add something to, like, <laughs> something you know softer. what I mean? So I didn't even know about the UFC, really, I just knew about, like, it. so I just got really obsessed with just doing MMA and grappling, and then I went up to Sarjo, saw his class, then that's when I really clicked, I was, like, I looked him up after, and I was, like, oh, my God, this guy's, like, you know, freaking Joe Lozon, he was huge, this is back in, you know, I think he was, just fight like Melvin Gillard and stuff. So like, he just knocked yeah. out, and that was like a big giant fight. So oh, so you were on, you were through, yeah. you've been yeah. through the whole, the whole thing basically. Yeah, yeah, I've been around for for a while. That's the thing. I it's just kind of came back on the scene because my six years off in the military. Yeah. But I mean, I've been training. I used to train with like Chuck O'Neill, if you know him back. Yeah, then. yeah, I yeah, yeah. Him, I sparred with him a lot of, at Bishops, uh, some older guys and stuff. So I've been around for a while. Training. So you had a a lot of time off. You know, serving your country. Yeah. Man, how's that? How'd you juggle that? I mean, young guy, yeah. you know, fighting career, uh, serving your country and jumping on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I had an all. I, I mean, I did really, I had a really cool, like, life and job in the military. Um, but, you know, I was getting paid pretty well. And it was, like, I like a good community of people. But, um, I don't know, man. I've always loved fighting so much, and it's always been something I like watch. I couldn't even watch it for a couple of years while I was in. I didn't even want to look at it because I was like, I missed it so much. You know what I mean? So, um, when I definitely when I at near the end when I made my decision, I want to get out of the military. I just started putting everything back into martial arts, and it was weird. We and him were talking about that on the way on the way down here. It's like, like I was like okay, I think, but like something about when I went through all the military stuff and coming out of it, I got so much better, so much faster, and I feel like I'm still going on that projectile. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know why or what if it maybe because i appreciate it more to train and i can work harder or just, I just more mature with it but yeah i've been going good ever since i got back on the horse that time away was i mean no no training at all do you guys grapple it can you get to beat each other up so, a little bit during in the service anything going yeah, on like so we're, honestly most of the time we're so smoked from like especially in training like you, they, they destroy you during yeah. the weeks so, like, by the time you hit the weekend set, you don't want it. The last thing you want to do is grapple or anything like that. But um, when I got, when I back, when I made it to team or when I got later on in training and I had some time, me and my buddies would go into the wrestling room. We had a, we had a grappling mat in room. We'd go in there, get some rounds, do some wrestling, jiu-jitsu. But it was always, like, so rusty. It's not like, the, it's like rolling. When you start rolling with guys What's who that? haven't rolled in a long time, it's like you guys last for What's like, that <laughs> rusty shell over there? Don't get poked like that. It wasn't really good training, I would say. But it was like, I mean, yeah, we try to get in there, though. Um, my striking got so much better though from before then. Like it was like that's the thing. I, part of my game, I think it's got way better. So well, you know, it's kind of uh, a coincidence. Like you went through that not being able to train kind of MMA while you're in the service. You kind of like with your group maybe self training. You know, my but you kind of went through the same thing in the Corona. Yeah. Because you could only be limited. Yeah. In the beginning, it's who funny. you could train with. It's funny you say that because I kind of like. A lot of this time during quarantine, especially when it first kicked up and got locked to your thing, it reminded me of like deployment, where you just like you can't go anywhere. There's nothing to do. You're just you're like confined to where you're at. So you just have to find ways and like when you're deployed and where to entertain yourself all day. And that's actually where I started actually doing a lot of. I started hitting the bag a lot when I was over in Afghanistan, right before I got out. Because I was like, I grappled a lot when I was in Afghanistan and I hit the bag a lot because there was nothing else to do. I wanted to entertain myself, and martial arts has always been one of those things that can always lean back on you know what i mean if i got nothing else to do i have oh I'm, i love yep. it i can always i don't get bored doing it so that's something that definitely so but anyways back to this quarantine thing when it started off and i was like shit like i can't go to my gyms i don't know what to, i started first i started opening my had my garage i remember just like all right brushing the freaking <laughs> sleeves out of the way making area in the garage move my parents cars out yep. out into the freaking uh the driveway and i was like this started training collecting things First thing I did with that stimulus check was uh, buy some buy some mats. Would you go Facebook Marketplace or uh, just <laughs> word of mouth from other gyms? Just or? word of mouth. Yeah, I just asked a couple of my coaches like what what they had, and um, I got these these mats from Great Mats. They're called, and they're actually awesome jujitsu mats. And so I started off with that. 
Um, then I got well, Jesse Gutierrez. Um, he hit me up and we just started talking on, on Facebook. Like, hey man, you want to do some rolling? So he came over, started grappling with me, and he, for like the first part two two months, I know like and nobody had really no contact with anybody else besides me and him. And he's a black belt. He's a really good. He's like a one thirty five or one twenty five er, I think. Um, when he used to he's fight, so bro. fucking good. One twenty five. He's a yeah, twenty five, yeah. and he still throws around guys at like yeah. one seventy. One. What's his so, um? Uh, is he a specialist in something like a leg lie or uh, just he he just drowned you? I don't tell all the secrets, but so it's some of the stuff everything? I picked up, I picked up a lot of stuff. I, really I, heard, he, I heard, I heard, he's mad at you. You blew him off. You jumped <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. towel and everything. Like, took off. She's on him right now. <laughs> you gotta deal with him, not me. Yeah, we've been hanging out a ton during this thing all this Saturday off but um yeah he's he's way like dark strokes guillotines peruvian neckties um just like all anything, the attacking, stuff. Yes, attacking the neck he knows a lot too and he's good it's good because he teaches like he'll catch me something for a while and then he'll be like okay and then i'll tell you <laughs> so, you is know that what right is yeah that and, and um yeah it's, it's i awesome. think i um when i went to one of the um one or two of the 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 fighter fighter days at lozon's I think I saw him there killing everyone. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, think yeah. I he, I saw him rolling with you. I think probably. Yeah, yeah. He, probably yeah. Me. he was running, going, diving yeah. for the leg iron and yeah, stuff. Yeah. It was great. And he'll keep going. He'll have a hard roll and just go, go get another hard roll with somebody else. Get another. Hard. He doesn't care. He'll just keep about. rolling. And I'll uh, have a couple cervezas the night before. Still shows up. Yeah, I don't know how he can just, drink the way he does and fucking come it's in. Just and a, like, he's in the mold, man. Yeah. He's just like channeled. He's good. He's like really good. Hey, Brett Layton, uh, did one of them announce that they they got a boxing match at the end at the end of the year or something? Really? I mean, it's well, I in, it's down the line. I, I mean, November or something. Yeah. But good. For, I mean, people staying busy. If they yeah. can't get the MMA fights, man, they got to find an outlet, man. Especially, and he's an amateur too, right? Yeah, yeah. But especially being an amateur, like I when I was amateur, I, used, I was doing more kickboxing and boxing fights than I was MMA fights because I think that's just the way to go. You learn so much just practicing one sport, getting good at it for a little bit, so. Awesome. Yeah, I, I recommend that. Well, let, you know, a few things happened while you guys were off. I mean, you know, MMA stopped, but, you know, UFC kept, kept, yeah. you know, had that lull, but they're back. Bellator Friday night in fucking New England for the next, what, couple months or so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I but wonder how they're going to pull that off. As far as what? Just pulling it off in general. No fans. Very back. strict. I mean, they're, they're going to do it not, like the UFC not, does. It. I mean, they're gonna, what's that? It's going to be pay per view. I think it's free on this Friday so night. Like, how, are they pay, how are they paying? I think they and sponsors. I mean, maybe they have something worked out with Mohegan it's Sun TV, that yeah. you know something going on, some kind of. Bro- I don't know if it's free or not. I know bare knuckle boxing's free. I know. Uh, I don't know LFA. Fabio's fighting LFA. Yeah. Uh, Charant on Friday. There's a lot of shit going on. We're gonna have a uh, uh, fight companion in here trying to shuffle sixteen fucking fights. At, uh, Friday night, but we're gonna that we're gonna fun. do it. Wait, that sounds fun. But, well, yeah, we might need some more screens in here. Exactly. Well, I got one there. Yeah, I never used that. That, that thing's like brand new. It's been turned on twice. Yeah. I don't have you know I don't have many people coming in here. I mean you know like you guys, and it's been dead. For yeah, months, man. No, I mean so no to, talk about to get back at what's been going on, uh, you know, we as far as me and my podcast, we came out with NewEnglandMMA.org. We came out with a, a rankings in April, and I think it was like the right time. Yeah. Because we came out with the rankings, and you know, fight it started, fight started open, uh, you know, happening in UFC, and now gyms are opening up, little things are trickling through. Man, seeing the UFC do that and gyms opening up and a ranking system, what's that do for you uh, to want to get back out there, man? Oh, oh man, dude. I mean, the U- it sucks because like it's like right now, I feel like only the high level guys they keep getting fights. Like, I think Calvin Cater's yeah. had two fights during this yeah, during dude. this quarantine, and. And all these other guys are getting like, you know, and for us, it's pretty stagnant. But at the same time, it's a little bit of hope, you know what I mean? Especially if there's nothing else on TV to watch. So it's like, it's that much, it's becoming that much more of a sport. Well, you know what yeah, I mean? There's yeah, more dude. talk about it from like just at my, all my everyday friends are becoming more fight fans now because that's all we have on TV. So they all want to watch the fights and you can't go to the bars. So you might as well just, you know grab the fights at the house. I just feel like, for me, I don't know, maybe that's just my perspe- perspective of it, but I feel like it's become making the sport even more popular, right. which is good for me to work hard for. It gives, you know, it gives me a bet. When this thing stuff is all over, it makes me want to grow and get you know higher up in the sport. So, Excellent. It, it's, it's honestly genius. Like, there's no other sports. People are bored as fuck. Mm-hmm. Literally yeah. bored as fuck. Like, what else are you going to do? You know? You can't do anything. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of good things are happening from Corona. 
Yeah. A lot, yeah, I mean, a lot you might have gained a lot of fans. We, like, MMA gained a yeah. lot. It's the only thing on, so they that's all that people are watching. So maybe, you know, how many will stay aboard? Oh, and how many will, yeah. you know, like will tailor off when all the sports come back? But you're going to have a substantial amount that are okay, going to stay aboard. Yeah, it has to, you know. It's just a numbers game for sure, and I, it's awesome. I mean, yeah, and it's like, another part is like, Honestly, I've been training probably more than I was before. You know what I mean? There's nothing else to do. There's no reason, no excuses. And people were coming to my house or chanting at the farm with me. But um, Yo, farm the cool. farm, I got to talk about farm the farm. Right, yeah, that's <laughs> a, I, got, I got a little photo montage of the farm. I was going to wait after this segment right here about the, the yeah. rankings and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, there, there's not much going on. But, you know, Bellator down the line, you know, this trickling out there that Premier ha- might have a card in October. I don't see how it's happening without any fans, uh, uh, especially a regional show, Yeah, happening without any fans unless it's an all-amateur show and the, the, the promotion's willing to dish out money and not get yeah. it back because you're going to have to get people tested. There's money behind yeah. the scenes that it's just not, hey, let's all get together. Yeah. So, well, you know, what's your take shows. on that? What's your, what is your outlook on, like, maybe a regional event go happening? First? Because I got two different perspectives. Okay, here's your perspectives first. All right, so first perspective is like, all right, I need to fight. I need to get to the next level. I'm one fight away. Yeah. All right, I'll fight for no money. All right? That's cool. The other part of that is like, dude, I've been out of work. I lost my job. I lost my fight. I was going to make a substantial amount of money. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to risk my health. So th- those are t- two perspectives, you know? You know, if, if you got two, three fights, maybe you just want to fucking fight. That's cool and all. Yeah. But... You know, like this last fight, I had a tough fight, and I was excited about that fight, and I was motivated, and I wanted to work, you know? I was also making a nice chunk of change between sponsors, ticket sales, merchandise, all that shit. I was making a nice chunk of change, and to think that I was going to take a W there, and to roll that into two months later, whether that be, whether it was a contender series or another local fight, to defend my belt, and then move on and skip the contender series, whether that was right to the UFC, you don't know, but that's more money on the table, you know? So... Now to, to, to drop all this money and to do it for free and risk your health, someone that's already been hurt, it's kind of like, fuck you. But on the other hand, it's like, I'm also one fight away from getting into UFC and making real money. So it's like, do I want to make local money or do I want to make UFC money? So, so the, those are my, like my two perspectives like com- combined into one. So it's like, do I fight for free and just have someone to fight, maybe not take the toughest fight to get that win, to get that finish, to, to get to the next level, to make some some more money or it's like do I take a tougher fight and make some more money now and and risk my health I'm risking my health either way so you know it's kind of one of those things where it's like all right well, what what are we doing here like what are the protocols what's going on behind the scenes whether you need to get tested what what like what's a promotion going to offer you like what's a risk reward so I'm kind of torn in between that health and and you know and money you know and and when, when you don't have work and you're on unemployment, I, I've been on unemployment since this whole thing started because I lost my bartending job right, the same day I lost my fight. Yeah. I lost my fight. You lost your gym, personal I lost my training gym. and stuff like that, yeah. I lost my job. I lost three jobs in one day. And it wasn't anything to do with my own. All that merchandise. I lost seven grand worth of merchandise. I put a $7,000 order on merchandise. I'm like, you what the fuck am I going to do with that? I haven't collected Sorry, all my sponsorship laugh, money. Jesus. Yeah. Dude, I, I placed a $7,000 order for merchandise thinking I'm going to profit a little bit on that to to be like, fuck. Well, what the fuck am I going to do? Now I'm in the hole. You think my, my stimulus check's going to cover my unemployment and cover my merch? No, dude. Right, I got to figure be, it the be, fuck before out. Before I go to him, because you guys are on different... I mean, you are two pro fights in. Yeah. He's got a few. I mean, exactly. he's I'm, on the cusp. I mean, not saying that contender can't come around yeah, and grab no, someone, it's, but... It's, it's it's more unlikely now for me because of my record of only two fights than it is, you know, for... He's got, what, four? You're four? Um, you know, five? I, I had four last year. It was going to be five, but I'm seven and two. Seven and two. You know? So, um, yeah, see, that, I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah. that he has a lot more Andy experience. Andrews just said he'll take you both on at the okay, same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably beat us. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. he's... Yeah. I, yeah. You know, it would have been great, I mean, if he got to fight that Bellator fight, <laughs> and then he would have been in the, the, the rankings. So uh, the rankings. I like he the fact. Dude, dude been, the, the rankings hard, worked out man. perfectly. Yeah. He called out JoJo. Yeah, I mean... Where the fuck was he in the rankings? Why wasn't he Because he fought for a professional organization, what PFL, and... When we were going through it, 
you had to have another regional fight back to get into the promotion. That's why we didn't let Andre Sukum tie in there and uh, Kyle and stuff because okay. they you need to fight back in the local uh, regional. We didn't think it was fair coming back from a major organization and jumping right That's back fair. in. You know, That's next fair. he fights locally. He was supposed to fight for CES and that yeah. got that. Now. The JoJo, is that, you think that's something that's going to happen? They agreed on it, but do fighters agree on things and they never happen? Does that, that happens I mean, too. Fights fall out all the time. Yeah, the fights fall out, but if a promotion wants to put it on, I think that's a good fight. That's man. amazing fight. Awesome fight. local number fight. One, and number one, and number one, and arguably the number one if, you know, if he never fought for PFL. That's yeah. a yeah. huge risk, huge reward for both of them. Well, yeah. Because JoJo, you know, he's coming off the ultimate fighter. Got to get Nate Andrews in this room. Yeah, Bring the the hey, I do. He's, he's been up, busy. What he's up, been Nate? busy. How you doing, Everyone's dude? busy, dude. Busy. You do this the weirdest hours. Hey, we got Triforce in here. He's been in here. I've done a fight compared right. with him. He's he'll get to me. Don't worry. Right. So go ahead. All right. Why don't you do one with him? I will. I definitely will. So all right, the JoJo and the. Do you think? I mean. That's a Bellator fight, or I mean, that's and Bellator's up in the next that's two what I'm months. Saying. It is. It is. I think it, it's obviously. I mean, but Andy Andrews can be in the UFC. Hands. Yeah. I have. I when I spar, like you know, I spar a lot of good guys, and, and there's something different when you spar with him against. I spar to mo- you know other guys. He's really good, so I don't see how he could be. So it could be definitely in the UFC. It could be a big fight, honestly. Again, him against JoJo. It's That's cool fight. that it, it could happen at a local level. You know what I mean? I mean definitely. <laughs> Come on down. Nate goes, he'll drive down here right now. <laughs> hey, we'll be here for another 35, 40 minutes. Come on down, Nate. Come on down. Sit right between these guys. You can knuckle them head right together, man. So, all right. So, you got Nate. I mean, a little heavier than you guys. I mean, what's it like? To go against that a guy like that that's just tall and I mean because you might face you're you know I mean you might face a guy like that that cuts I, I down thought, and, well you I did you faced down. a couple but <laughs> I said I wasn't fighting at 55 anymore yeah so 45 or bust since I broke my neck I'm off that's at it 55 yeah yeah and I trust me I walked into one of Nate's straights and fucking blew my eye up <laughs> dude the guy I walked right into one of his straights and my eye just fucking blew up Black eye, fucking lost contact. I was like, oh, sure, that fuck. happens a lot when you guys are going with, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, guys like that. But it is yes. what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. You know what I mean? mean it's part of the game. weights and weight classes and shit. And I like know. working with bigger, taller guys every once in a while just to get used to it. You know what I mean? But especially, I mean, right now I feel like a lot of my training partners are pretty short, so it's good to get switched. Yeah, up everyone I work with is bigger and taller than me. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, one last thing on that fight. Do you think it's? I mean. In my eyes, see, yes, or maybe Mike Paul there might be able to pull someone off in pins if pins allows yeah. a certain amount of people because Mike is a very smart businessman. He stays in contact with the commission yeah. and stuff like that. So I could see that maybe happening, but that ain't where Nate's going to fight. All right, no. why don't you host a promotion? You create a belt. How, We're how thinking you, about it. How, okay, hear me out. Why don't you create a promotion? That means- <laughs> make a belt. But how the fuck do you get these guys to fight? Like, exactly. Like, like locally. Well, let, let me just say, locally, all right, CES is money. different. They're under fight pass. There could be something there that at least gets them something. I mean, I know Nate sells the place out and makes terrible money. Okay. Now Crazy money with ticket, ticket sales. sales with yeah. Corona. But you got CES that at least has uh, the fight pass. And other shows are doing it with fight pass, even though... You know they're probably not making much, but they're yeah. getting they're at, getting action. I see Bellator. I mean, Bell, why would Bellator just jump on these two guys right now unless they already have and thrown them? You think Bellator gives a fuck about anything but Bellator? Yeah, yeah. but two guys like this fighting. I, I mean, you got JoJo on just, yeah. that is trying to get into the UFC and is dead set on getting the UFC. If Bellator takes him in a huge fight yeah. against Nate, that's a fucking huge fight. A kid that had his goal that was in the UFC he was like. It was set to go there. That's his goal again. And then you yeah. scoop him up to fight Nate yeah. Andrews. Yeah. That's a big fight for uh, Bellator, man. I could be. I Even without that. fans in attendance, I think. Yeah. It could be. I, I'm interested to see how this Bellator thing pans out, though. I'd like to see. I mean, more fights on TV, the better for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just, uh, pretty excited to see that. That'd be a good fight. They, they, like you said, they're definitely that level. I mean, you know both of them, so I'd definitely, wa- awesome. I'd definitely watch it. Well, great talks. That, well, We'll get beyond this because we talked a little bit. Let's talk about this farm, this yeah, farm the, thing the, that's the been fight, going on. The fight farm. What? What? Where did this place come from? Don't tell me where it is, but how? Um. So did this place the come fight about? farm is so one of my my uh, family's like really close friends growing up. Um, I used to like, basically grew up there when I was a child. Yeah, my mom's best friend. 
she owns a big farm and they have hold weddings. So right now there's no weddings this year, so there's nothing going on. So they ba- they have a big pavilion and deck that's like empty waiting. Now we, we had to pick stuff up now because now they're bringing weddings back. Yeah. Stuff. People are starting to have them. But for a little while during quarantine, I was just like, can I uh, put some mats out there? Yeah, well, nobody else is using it. Don't, I don't care. So we just started training there. And it gets funny is they started growing. Do you know Pat McCrowan? Yeah, yeah, yes, I do. Yeah, so one yeah, day, from regiment, right? From regi- yeah. yeah. So Pat McCrone one day is like, I, I, I'm driving by, and he's like working on the pool. They're sitting there building a pool patio. Out there. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he's just working. And I was like, yo, dude, what's up? He's like, yeah, man, we're training over there in the deck. And he's like, oh, really? So he brought oh, his mats there. Oh, he added cool. on to it. Um, so we started doing that, having different groups of people coming down. You know, we kept it pretty small. Um, and you know, and then. So when then Joe Lozon, he started coming down. We added more mass to it, and dude, it ended up being this. We just matted out the whole thing, which kind of makeshift gym with from everybody's stuff bringing it into this farm, and we'd be pretty consistent. Really good group of guys in there. We've had some like really good, and it's cool because it's like milling in MMA. It's not like just like one gym. Nobody like all the whole gym rivalry thing kind of goes out the window right yeah. now, and everybody's just kind of like nobody cares. They just want to be there. They're just happy to be there and happy to be rolling. And I think for like us. Especially in all the shit that's going on in the world, it's good to get people like for us. We need to roll. We need jujitsu. How, how did these people get on the Rolodex? I mean, he was on the Rolodex. I mean, how did you I get these calls. people? How I, did, was there a was there a secret messenger club yeah. that went, hey, Connor, <laughs> I don't know, Connor, man. he's I, gonna I, fall well, up, so Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Word goes around fast in the MMA community. Once like you hear weird. one thing, there's you know. I even have it as yeah. as the title here: Connor's secret <laughs> training location. <laughs> So we'll let that uh, let that yeah. flash. Where the hell is it? Kind of like finding out the, about the Matrix. You know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yes. All right. So Pete. Uh, yeah, Pete was. So yeah. Pete was like using us, Joe. Pete was basically using it for a lot of his rolling. I mean, he, we didn't have him working work in the last couple of weeks. I've been busy at my brother's wedding and stuff. And he's been scoring on the weekends. But yeah, there's some pictures of it. It's been sick. Now, yeah. who's that on the left? That's Mike Avila. That's my uh, striking coach from when I kind of growing up uh, when I was younger. What's that? Uh, so that's he's after, a, he's is that after, keeping you alive, yeah, that so, stuff, right? Yeah, this kid brought me a bottle of uh, <laughs> bought me a whiskey. But that Mike Avila is one of my coaches. Uh, I forgot to talk, but he's been there from my, since I was a Look kid. Look at that crew know. of killers. I have yeah. a, I have another. I'll let this flash through again one more time. Is that Dylan? Lo- is Dylan Lockhart in there? No, that's no. John. Uh, that looked like a little John like him. Something. Right uh, he's he fights out of Connors. So that's me. Yeah, I would imagine there was a lot of. Lakeville and Lozon people. Not too many Lakeville. We had a couple. Tony Lee would come down, but mostly I would say it was Lozon's guys and Connor's MMA guys. Like, randomly, uh, we've had Mitch there. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Hughes came there. Um, yeah, right here I have a picture. Gym, of, right there, I got a picture of the whole crew right there. Jim and Taunton. and yeah, they got those guys from Taunton and came. This down. Nicole oh, Haley, that, yeah. that BJJ yeah. Gym? yeah, I don't know. But that's their year. Yeah. yeah. Look at that crew. Oh, some good get people in there. Some good fighters. Aaron's yeah. there. Wasif, dude. That kid, Wasif, I've been training with him. He's uh, fucking good. He's good. He's dude, really good. He's like, Chad Cook? It, yeah, he's Chad Cook. He's he, good hands, he good boxing. He throws like a motherfucker. Pat, uh, oh, Pat Bill Bill Bride's hard. over there. That's, we have to yell at him because he throws too hard all the time. We're like, yo. Oh, is that right? So he, he's good. Yeah, and yeah, he hasn't yeah. even had any amateur fights yet. He's going to be good. Um, Look at that crew, though. Yeah, there's some good dudes. Don, where are you? Oh, right now, Mitch. Right now, Mitch. Cool, man. Yeah. So, is the secret location still there? Like, can you still train there? Or is it just... I have, I have my personal mats there that I had from the quarantine. Yeah. So, the, and Pat McCone's mats. So, we still have like a little area, but, uh, right. They're holding weddings, so we have to put them off to the side, yeah. hide them for now. But, like, when there, people aren't there. Oh, so I you can want still to, all can, get together. I can put them out there, get a small little but, group together. But, all right. But it's not like... You, no, people got not, places no. to go yeah, now. Like got some of their gyms are people's open. People's gyms, and, exactly. Yeah. Gyms are opening Gyms are opening back up. And, you know... Playing pros, I mean, obviously not for like general classes, but like a lot of the pros I know, like you're trying to get in gyms and you know get some training in because, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of money too, and it's like you can't you can't stay stagnant forever if you want to. You have to practice it, it, and it, practicing on the dummies. You see gyms doing that, him with yeah. the punching bags and the dummies, and like you can do it for a little while, but you know you can't you can't do that forever. You need bodies. And yeah, stuff. exactly. You need that live. You need that right now is fucking no contact. I'm like, yeah. I, I told, told my. Where is it? City of town. No, Citadel. C- I, should, I think City, uh, City of Tongue and Boston I, are in uh, Lakeville. St- not Lakeville. Uh, where are they? In Bo- so outside of no, no, no. It's uh, Somerville. Somerville. They're yeah. still not. They're not opening they for another be. two weeks or so. They might not. Yeah. It sucks. I mean, I, I'm sure they're going to have privates saying, and, and like, stuff. The way things are going, you see other places spiking. Rules might, it might, they uh, might, I hope not. It's also like who's enforcing back, the rules too. Like my, my gym is super strict because my coach has uh, 
a compromised immune system. So one, I need my fucking coach around. Can't fucking kill him. Yeah. So it's like my gym's super strict about no contact. Other gyms are not as strict, and I tend to gravitate more to those not as strict gyms. I'm kind of a gym gypsy where I'll train with everyone that's good in New England. Yeah. And uh, you know, fortunate enough to fucking be talented enough to not yeah be dead yet. So yeah. Fuck it. If um, say contender contender series. I think it did it say it's taken off in August. Is it August when it's? I think it's starting. I think the it's first week early is, August. Yeah. What is um, if they came a, came calling, how when could you be ready it, for it? It's for a there? really interesting situation right now because they're only booking fights for that month. I think they have like three or four months lined up, and they're only doing a month at a time because they don't know what's going to go on with COVID. So, you know, um, that being said. The past few weeks and, and like going into like my goal to next month is be three weeks out of fight camp. So if I get a call like, all right, I might have to rush out a week because I'm not trying to kill myself to make weight. That being said, it's like I've been busting my ass to drop weight, to get in shape, to be fight ready. And by fight ready, I mean two to three weeks out. You know, right in that little cushion period where it's like, all right, I'm not sucking, but I'm not happy either. You know, it's kind of yeah. like that nice medium. Um and, and you kind of got to play it by year because fights are going to fall out. People are going to get COVID. Fights are going to get canceled. They're going to try and salvage them. And, you know, it's a great opportunity. And to be able to have an opportunity is one thing. To be able to take an opportunity is another. You know, like, how many people have gotten the call that, that can't make weight? That, like, and, and it's no fault of their own. Gins have been closed. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's something that I dealt with. Like, I gained weight. Like, I left and, uh, like, right after this started... I was like looking for training. I was getting some Fight Club training in. It, it, it was great training, but it wasn't the training I was looking for or wanted. Uh, not that I didn't want it. I, I just wanted more, you know? So I ended up... Dude, it's actually funny like how I ended up in Key West, but uh, the, have I told you this story? No. Oh, dude. So I'm playing Call of Duty with this dude, Select 3030, and uh, turns out to be this guy, Eddie Aguiar, who owns a gym in Key West, Florida. Bone Island Zachary Jiu-Jitsu. Surley's calling you on right now, uh, Connor. He wants to call in. Uh, like, bust your balls. Why does he say something? Is he saying something on here? <laughs> no, oh, is he right now? What's he? You tell him yeah, he's going to get kicked off tell the Facebook him, again. Tell him the, did he get kicked off Facebook? Yeah. You know, he oh, so we'll get, get, we'll get there. Get tell him, 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 his, tell him to write his comments there. Can he not write them there? That's probably why he's messaging oh, around yeah, messaging because yeah, yeah. he can't he can't comment. <laughs> yeah, on this. Yeah. Fuck you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so what happened was like I'm playing Call of Duty because there ain't nothing else to do, and uh, I meet this dude Select. He happens to own a gym and a black belt. He's like, Yo, why don't Whose you phone is on? Oh, that's mine. So oh I yeah, no, I just don't want to. I'm like, You're where great. is that coming from? I mean, I so thought... which is cool because we do have sound. So that's so great. I just bought a flight round trip to Key West for a couple weeks and. Trained with this guy that I met on Call of oh, Duty. Shit. Did you play Xbox when you were down his play? Not one fucking thing. <laughs> so, dude, I woke up at 6.30. I was training by 7, 7.30. Done at 9 o'clock. Chilled. Had lunch. Mean, meanwhile, like, uh, the gym turned into, like, a, uh, a, what do you call it? A, um, like, a, not a daycare, but, like, a uh, summer camp during the day. So, I would help out with the summer oh, camp. Oh, cool, cool. Right? And then at, like, 5.30, they'd have kids jujitsu from all the kids that didn't get picked up at uh, 5 o'clock. 5.30, they had uh, the kids program, which I would help out or play on my phone or whatever. And then 6.30, we train at night. So I was getting some badass training in up in Coconut Creek. And I was working with all their fighters out there. Not Coconut Creek, excuse me, Key West. Then we did take a little trip up to uh, Fort Lauderdale for a day. It was a fucking hell of a day, too. We woke up at like 6.30, drove down to Fort Lauderdale, which is like three and a half hours. Trained at like two different gyms. Hit some cryo, grabbed some food, drove the fuck back. It was like eight hours on the road, three hours of training, but it was fucking solid. And and it was all in the gi, which isn't what I'm used to. So I'm just like, oh, fuck. it's work though. It's, uh, work, it's yeah. work. And and man, did that that help me clear my mental state because I was in like such a rut, this funk, this this yeah, like everything I had going for me. I had all my cards play out right, and I was, and it was just like things were things were falling in order, right, and. I busted, you know, and then I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do now? So I picked up the pieces and it was cool too. Cause like, like we had a couple rest days and those, like I had three rest days over the course of two weeks, at, you know, training double sessions. So your body gets broken down, but I only train, 
rested three days and we went out spear fishing and let me tell you man it was the coolest fucking thing rather than drinking water though you're in fucking snorkel and like uh like uh goggles right and you're just like looking down then you drive down and you wouldn't believe how far down you could get on one breath hold then you got a spear gun shooting at <laughs> fish it's Don's so fucking, cool. fucking some 007 <laughs> shit yeah, no, the key much, west man pretty much what happened was i learned how to drink salt water and get <laughs> it was so fucking cool it was so cool and now so, you met a fucking uh, yeah, a contact dude. that you can head down yeah man yeah. and and i told him too like i, I want to return the favor so when things start opening up back here like, dude, he's going to be, you know, coming down and training with me. So it's one of those things where, like, MMA isn't super evolved over there. They had a lot of amateur fights. I know Florida has a lot of pro fighters, but uh, Key West is a lot smaller. So they had a lot of amateur guys. And, uh, you know, he wants to come up here and train and see how things are done. Yeah, and, and excellent. Back. So it's cool. pretty cool. Yeah. So now we get to you. That was, Jesus, whole <laughs> Don show, man. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, now you. We talked about his timeline. If someone came calling, something happened. I mean, he's in a, he's a little father in the game. Yeah. Too, and I mean, it's it might be more regional for you, but you yeah. never know. With you, what what yeah. is your I which, mean, which y'all uh, look? I'm for? always getting ready to fight for the, at the top level at all times. So um, I'm ready to go. If, if I like, if, if my my mindset as a fighter, obviously, I want to just keep fighting the best guys. As, and like any time after that, I would like to have a fight every two months. I'd love to have a fight against the next guy to keep going, keep going. And outside of it's not realistic right now, but um, I will, I definitely, I mean, if something pops up that's the right move, I'm gonna take it. Um, I obviously have my managers and stuff like that that's gonna make those kind of decisions for me, but I'm just keep getting ready and ready, more and more ready for right now. <laughs> Are you reading this shit? Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to get oh, distracted. Oh, you see it? Yeah, I'm getting there. distracted I as I read it. Oh, God, you can oh, see it on there. Oh, I'm watching him talk. I'm watching Zach Sarah talk oh. shit. I'm like, I, I didn't even know. I was ready to read it to you. I didn't know. I didn't fucking know oh, that. that's funny. That, that, uh, People who know that. at home, Zach Searle, the fucking, oh, you know, he's kicked me. off Facebook. He cannot say, but he's messenger on, <laughs> messaging me on Messenger, <laughs> and these guys are seeing all the messages. He's going, tell Don, Searle, you can say it to him direct. He's saying it. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> what's the Fruit Loop shit? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. He's a Fruit Loop. It, it's funny, too, because during COVID, uh, I was supposed to fight one of Carlos's guys, and I ended up buying a dog from Carlos from my mom's. <laughs> That's so weird. It's weird how that happened. That's right. Didn't we? Wait a minute. weren't you on the show? Didn't we talk? Like, didn't we talk? I don't remember. I you were telling lot, me you were going to get a puppy. Maybe I talked to you on uh, uh, maybe. On, online. I don't know through a Skype interview or something uh, like that. So he's go, he's going to Florida. I mean, do yeah. we, you travel around. Anything? Where um, are you going? New new thing. I mean, travel around. I did go. On, I went on one trip in the beginning of this thing down to Charleston, South Carolina. I didn't. I just worked out. I didn't really train, but. Um, I haven't gone anywhere recently, uh, but I've been changing up stuff a lot. Uh, working, uh, I went to start going to SOS Skill of Strength with Mike Perry. He's um, oh nice, he's, nice, yeah, he's good. He worked with like you know Joe Lozon, Rafa, Cal- all those good. He's worked with a lot of good fighters now. He just started going. Just started, Hillary yeah. Rose is there. Yeah. D- Tom Pags is there. Tom Pags. Yeah, so it's like stuff. a lot of good. You know, it's cool. You see, because it's kind of cool. We get to pop in and see each other every once in a while yeah. while we're there working out. And um, yeah, yeah, Connor hooked it up over there, so I started. It's good. It's helped me a lot, like my, my my mobility, especially me, like with my military career and like six years of special operations. So it's like put a lot of like wear and tear, especially through the training of, and for that, it put a lot of wear and tear on the body, like knee injuries, lower back, and it's, you know a little nag. Not that it's like gonna stop me, but a little nagging thing. Yeah. And all his workouts have helped me like substantial. Like he's like you know, like way he says he's like he's like. You're, you know, you're already out there fighting another person. There's nobody's fighting yourself and another person. So that's why I say, like, yeah, and it's true. It's been helping me, like, and it's helped me up better in my jiu-jitsu and my striking and everything, so. Excellent. Yeah. Um, as far as the service, do you still, I'm all, I'm you're out. Done. Uh, done so, it? yeah, six, six years, and I was like, right, that's that's enough for me. I'm, I'm out of here. So, so you get, I mean, you get benefits and stuff from the service? Like, is that, uh, yeah. do you get stuff from spell, that? From yeah, I get, like, um... I get a little bit of like disability because my knee, I guess knee surgery, okay. my lower back, arthritis in my lower back. Um, but uh, other than that, I get um, the biggest thing is insurance. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not, yeah, exactly. It's like not that's the best huge. insurance. I get the VA, but that's like but it's, it's still, it's still big, something. Big. Yeah. It's like as a fighter, you know, we're not making that much money. 
and it's it's something that's nice to have if I get hurt and there's a VA right across, especially at Lausanne's the, there's a hospital like right down the right, road, yeah. which I have been to a couple of times. <laughs> 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 from, from that straight punch from uh, Andrews, yeah. Andrews so I have been there. <laughs> so it's good to have. I, that right do you, so fighting is professional fighting is your basically your career and you know yeah private and teaching and stuff yeah. like that that is your main that's my main income. source of income okay. right now yeah i'm teaching at lakeville and teaching at lozon teaching kickboxing adults and kids um doing privates here and there so that's my main source like i said for me like a fight helps out a lot yeah and that's what sucks that we don't have that right now that's like every two and a half whatever two and a half months we usually do it is whatever it yeah is, every time five. weeks really. yeah yeah every time every we, time weeks. Well, you two, like yeah. it helps out a lot it helps out you two guys are popular as yeah, fuck, exactly. man. It's like we bring you crowds. sell a lot of fucking tickets you sell a lot yeah. of merchandise i mean you're like on Still instagram shirts. you're nuts i mean yeah. as far as your popularity yeah how did you, how did you how did you because you're you're every day, like we've talked about social media, you're chipping away every day getting followers, yeah. getting people aboard. Yeah, no, you get a bunch. How did you do it? Yeah, my, I didn't really, honestly, it was just like, so my stuff was all in private until like I got out of the military. So I didn't have any, like, any followers just besides like people I knew. And then um, when I started getting out of the military, I started fighting and, you know, so I started posting military pictures of myself, you know what I mean? Because some of my stuff, I mean, it's all like the stuff I did. Yeah. I, I wasn't, when I was in special operations, we are not allowed to post stuff. Yeah. So, so now I had these footage, photos I could yeah. post. So I'd post them every once in a while and people saw that I was fighting and then I did that job and they thought it was cool. So I just, all of a sudden just got flooded with a, with a ton of followers. So it doesn't help that the That's guys cool, like, man. You know, <laughs> they'll, they'll <laughs> like Adonis and he's not, you know, not a bad looking dude either. Both of yeah. you guys, man. So. Well, are you married pretty... yet? What's up? You got a girlfriend? Married? <laughs> can, we say, can, we, can we say that on fucking? Can we say that online? <laughs> That's the rumors, can we say that the rumors, He's fucking oh. kicking me under the table the right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, dude. Why, why you gotta go there? Dude? <laughs> All right, I'm to you. <laughs> fucking married. I was kidding. I say that yeah. to everyone. I mean, I wasn't you might have a girlfriend or something like that. All right, we'll get off that fucking thing right now. So what's, you know, Lausanne's open, like, how is uh, Trey been like, open? I've seen him outside, stuff like that. Like, so, how do you so, how do you manage that? Joe's been good because he, he hasn't stopped paying me through this entire thing. And so, but when we did open up, um, we said so we've been doing outside. Six, you know, the bags are spread apart, and I've been running like kickboxing classes on on a heavy bag, a water heavy bag, you know, the ones they. Put. And it's it's good, you know what I mean. It's, it's obviously I'm it's helping me become a better teacher, it's setting up creativity and having things to go and like having a system. I'm definitely gonna use bags for more often now when I go back to teach. I used to always do the mitt work a lot most of the yeah. I'm gonna be using bags a lot more. Definitely something I'm gonna bring from this, but it's it helped me become like feel a, that solid. Yeah, like that I think solid. it's good for everybody. It's, it gives people more constant work. You and know, you can what move I mean? it around a bit more. Like, yeah. Right? Well, sometimes when you do a miss and you have partners, you have one guy who's good or one of somebody. So that means that one person's always sacrificed sacrificing mm -hmm. their work they're going to get during that class yeah. compared to the other person one person's actually kind of probably going to benefit more so it's good to mix it up but when you have a bag you can have that person go in hard as they want and you not nothing's holding them back besides themselves when they have the bag so that's why i like teaching on that but yeah i think it's gonna be good i think it's, i mean it's been good the class has been my class has been actually pretty consistent i have had like a big because you can only have you have to like sign up ahead of time and then the full yeah, spots fill up yeah. whatever but i've had like pretty consistent full classes since you know this thing, I mean, obviously people aren't working, so right. And they're coming, they're, yeah, and they're, com they're yeah, coming yeah, back. They're coming I mean, back. Yeah, they're coming back. I mean, so. people need to, you know, ridiculous clothes and all that stuff. I mean, I know they were thinking they were doing it for people's good, but yeah. a lot of people that didn't had that time off from going to where they religiously went, the gym yeah. went crazy in this time, and it's yeah. they're still. I, I, a lot of people still shell shocked that that was yeah. missing. That are coming back. You know yep. what I mean? There's still still people afraid to go back to the yep. gym. That because I fear well, out there. I heard people even tie up today talking today, and uh, I was at SOS and I was listening to the coaches talk, and they said they they've had a big influx since before people coming. They've had he said he taught a class with more people he's ever taught yeah. ever because I think people are just need like you said something. they're just so sick of you know being and they want something they some sort of outlet so people are coming and signing up for hobbies and things you know and things well, to do well, so think about it like this like people do so many different things to relieve stress right people go to the bar they drink they people work out there's so many different avenues of releasing that stress some people fucking make art some people play music we like to fight that's cool and all but now like you half of those are still eliminated due to corona so working out's one of them like ah, maybe we'll start going to the gym you know yeah. and, and and that doesn't surprise me 
and, and it's, it's something that should take off. And I hope that trend keeps going and things keep growing and people get in better shape overall. Yeah. Because I think uh, society as a whole is actually going to grow from that. Yeah. And that thing is being healthy helps a lot. With, like if you're unhealthy, you have like some sort of like 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 eating being fat and getting, getting unhealthy is going to help make this virus worse for you. So yeah. it's like a big thing. So if you're just making people sit inside the house all the time and they're in, you know, that's going to kill them eventually too. Or you know what I mean? But depression or men, some sort of mental oh, problem or, you my, know, my me- mental so like, yeah, has it's been like, like, yeah, like, like training, not training, training, not yeah. training. And people like classes. It's like a lot of people don't know how to work out by themselves. And exactly. you know what I mean? Like that's a big problem for a lot of, so it's like, I think it's a very necessary thing to open. I mean, maybe not open everything up like bars and everything, but open gyms up. Yeah, the health sense. something health, that's the gonna, health you know. thing is I think is very important for people. I, um, did you were you doing like any um, not Skype? What do they call it? The Zoom Zoom stuff? Yeah, when I, was, you were I out? hated that. I yeah, hated that, that was the hard. That was the hardest teaching I had. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I got to sit in front of this thing for. 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is, and then, like, you know, come out with a workout for kids to make make kids focus on doing yeah. martial arts. In front of a screen. I, in front of yeah. a screen. It's like, I don't know. The, you know, I don't know. I think I, a lot of, was I, like, hard. Some, was hard. I know some gyms that got more people yeah. to join the gym. And I think it was, a lot of it was the parents giving kids something to do. Yeah. It gave them a break. Oh, I can get them on, yeah. like, Zoom That's for an hour, you exactly. know, and I can, you know. That's what it it's is. It's funny you mention that because I, I uh, used to date this chick and I used to always make fun of her because what she would do is like go on Skype or Zoom or whatever it was back then and uh, she used to teach Chinese kids English online. It was the weirdest fucking thing and it would pay her and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? I'll get like, a story after like, you. I want to hear your story because I, I, I would rip on her like, I went to Hi. high school with this kid. We hung out after, you know, a few years. He's still in the neighborhood. He moved to Japan, right? He married a woman uh, f- from Japan, has a family there. He started going live teaching businessmen how to say the simple things when they get to America. Japanese, oh, yeah, yeah, how to say, how to speak like the yeah. simple terms to get themselves around to meetings. Yeah. To, you know, he made a fucking kill. He had the richest fucking guys yeah. in Japan coming to him. For you know, for the simplest little like that's you know, that's crazy. Yeah, they're probably loaded with that's money. Don't yeah. know how to yeah, speak they're like, All right, and then yeah, he was doing $10, no, he's like, to talk. Yeah, <laughs> no, he was doing that line. He was getting like hundreds, <laughs> thousands of people coming on, which he would get sponsors mention you know people's yeah. names on there. You see these people now doing the same thing. They're throwing fucking things in water and pearls are coming out. And yeah. Fucking everyone's buying them off the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's, it's, it's like, like a show. A girl, girl has, girls, a, a woman has a show, right? Yeah. She has like this bomb, right? And it has... A bath bomb. A bath bomb. Okay. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you buy the bath bomb and whatever's in it, you get it. So it's kind of like a, you know, yeah. like let's a make a deal element. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So when it dissolves, it could be a ring, it could be a ruby, it could be like, yeah, totally different things. Could be a piece it's of shit. always yeah. the, fa- <laughs> yeah, it could be a piece <laughs> of shit. Like, I don't think so. I should have no way. But bomb, there's dude. certain things like that. You got the chicks like yeah. making, putting makeup on. Yeah, your guys putting makeup oh on, god. showing how to put makeup yeah. on. They're making a ton of money. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so genius. Let's say you spend five hundred bucks on one ring and you sell ten thousand of these bath bombs, and one might have like a nickel. Yep. So yeah, you sell them for like a dollar fifty. That's what I'm saying. Boom, you just made ten to fifteen thousand dollars. And it's so easy to pay someone on Facebook. With, right? Yeah. With Facebook oh, pay. I'm so dumb. I'm ready to I make a my, a, like, my, my fans only page. I'm ready to like, go run around with dude, fucking I tr- my ass. I tried doing that as like a joke. I kept snapping everyone on my feet. I finally someone sent me uh sent me a dollar on a Venmo. That was stop. it. That was it. <laughs> they said stop sending feet pics. Bucket list hit. Yeah. I, got I, made, I also made, made a buck. I also made a TikTok. It was called TikTok Toes. It was all your feet, huh? Yeah. It, it, I, I don't Why, know. is there something you going on with your feet that we should know? Tic-tac-toe. I just thought it was Tic-tac-toe. That's actually for genius. You're going to get those feet, people. Tic-tac-toe. Yeah, that was my idea. Why don't you have two people playing... I wish I could TikTok what we're doing with our feet right now. Go ahead. I don't think... I got girl socks on. Take your socks off. I, don't, I don't know if I cut my Take nails. No, it'd be a little embarrassing. I want to leave the room. I might have a towel. I might have a hey, dude, dude, you get you hey, hey, let me tell you one thing. My <laughs> second toe is long as my pinky. All right. So, so looking at that, 
That's a sexual device right there. <laughs> that means you're not my, my type. My whole flight, dude. You're, you're no longer right, my we're, type. We're getting shit. off subject, even right. though that's fucking yeah. awesome. Zach Shirley, you know, rumor has it, Connor Matthews, <laughs> nine inch um, finger. Yes, that is that's awesome. That's good. totally correct. Unit, absolutely, totally facts. correct. I think he's like nine and a half, but <laughs> whatever. So, everyone's asking what happened to um, what happened to Zach. I don't know what happened to him. Was he? I mean, Cage Titans had a thing on Monday. Was like, he not there? Did he? Post something. I think he got banned, but He's, are we talking genetically? Uh, we all know. Yeah, we already yeah, know. Like, is there a no, car exactly. accident? Like, it's did he get yeah, banned? Yeah. What, what did you know. hear about the banning? Like, like uh, yeah, for like so a three Facebook, day? Or? He told me, what was it for? He, he said something semi offensive on Facebook or something. Someone like, reported yeah. him for bullying probably or something. Probably reported him and they probably had three days. Time, time out for a couple days. They shut um, right before uh, the corona hit. Well, no, it was like January. I think he said he's going to slap somebody. You tell somebody that he was going to Yeah, that'll him. get him. Somebody yeah, will. Yeah, some really? jerk yeah, will. Yeah. yeah, you can get bullied. Which is not that somebody. bad. I mean, it isn't, yeah, but. For so, him, that's really. He's so like, petty. I think he hey, says way he's more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's I'll, sl- I'll slap you while I'm nice. banging your that's sister or something. Nice. That's, you know. so, so Zach Zero threatens to slap someone, and what Facebook does is that. <laughs> <laughs> and that hurts him, because you know that's his outlet. Yeah. I mean, he missed the whole thing. Fi- uh, what do you have? Uh, what do you say? What do you say? Click it. What's he saying? I don't know what he said. Oh, he'll. I don't know. I'm sure he's going on a rant right now. I'll probably. I made fun of him. Yeah, I said well, I'll slap Tyler and Facebook auto time me for thirty days. <laughs> <laughs> he's out for a month. Oh no! Wait a minute. He said he'd slap Tyler. Tyler who? Pimento on the uh, Cage Titans, the Table Titans. Yeah, but who got him? I don't know. What? Bro. So it happened Monday. They probably commented so. on it, and then somebody reported it, and then or they probably think wow. they. they Oh, that just, happened Monday? Was that when that show Jimmy Manning was on Monday? Right? I like yeah. I've posted him and Connor Barry are talking shit. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, oh, I, him I, and Connor Barry talk shit. To, oh, is Connor taking it personal? I think they're both. No, no, it started oh, off like oh fun shit. Like, I had Connor on here. He told me a whole backstory about uh, him and Jimmy, and uh, it kind of erupted. And Jimmy, I gotta on, rewatch that podcast. Went on their podcast Monday and. Had his side on uh, Connor, so it's a whole shit show going oh, on. I actually. like it. Facebook, Dude, has I a, like it. Well, there's some vocal drama going <laughs> exactly. on. Exactly. Right so the fight, I like I like it. as it far as I know now, the fight's happening, so we're probably going to be oh, seeing it. It's already gone into fighting. Rights. Well, yeah, it's agreement. So. What we're gonna see is a lot of posting for, on both sides. <laughs> Imagine, oh, dude, I, I fucking love it I because like it. That, that's I, fun to watch. I work in the bar with Jim Manning, and I also trained with him plenty of times. Mm-hmm. And I also trained with Connor plenty of times, where yeah. I consider him a teammate of mine. And it, it's one of those things where it's like I'm seeing Connor making memes, and they're just kind I'm of funny. The same ball and ball. they're also like Jimmy's also making memes, and they're kind of funny. And I'm like, oh, I'm man. Just you can't up. like and anything. I like, like, can't like anything. I, I just feel like the real life version of that Ma- Michael Jackson <laughs> meme, just like <laughs> eating popcorn. <laughs> like, oh, this is so good because I know both parties involved. Uh, yeah, and the fight hasn't even started. Like, there's it hasn't even camp is and haven't started for oh, a fight for him. That's going to be fun. Um, but yeah. like you said, it's like I'm on both sides and, you know, I'm kind of the media guy. I'm friends kind of yeah. with both of guys. So, you know, it's tough even when you guys in New England fight. Yeah. Like, I have fr- I'm friends with so many yeah. fighters. That's why you it's know, good when you fight from people from out of state. Yeah, man. exactly. I don't have to worry <laughs> yeah. about it. You know what I mean? It's like... Um, like well, why are you going to beat up everyone that's close to you too? You know what I mean? Like, my, my whole thing is like, you came out with the rankings, right? Me and Bruce trained awesome. together, right? Yeah. Bruce is ranked number two. I'm ranked number three. Yeah. Fuck Matt Bissett. Fuck Bissett. Fuck Bissett. <laughs> yeah, the guy pretends like he doesn't know who I am. All right, fuck you. Oh, I saw that whole... Uh, yeah, dude. He can go awesome. fuck himself. That's awesome. Ooh. Um, Ooh. He's got number one. There's the target. <laughs> yeah. I said it. Fuck yeah. All right, while we're talking about Jesse that, G. let me get that ranking Jesse up there. Online. Boom. Um, but it's like, why there are you going to beat up everyone's close to you? Like, dude, everyone's trying to go to the same place. I want to train with everyone that's good. Except for... Uh, well, who's beating up each, uh, everyone close to him? Well, what are you guys? Are you guys one forty five? Yeah, yeah, they're both. Yeah, yeah. And you were fighting for the Cage Titans title. Yeah. He just captured the. Um, yeah. They, so what was said in that day? He no, doesn't he, think he was just you like, have enough fights for that, or what's his oh, story? Dude, the only thing that's stopping me from being ranked high is the amount of fights. Same thing with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're in the same boat. Yeah. We're, we're at two different stages of our career, but we're we're in the same boat. Is that a they, fight? They got thirty fights. Both say Bellator approached you with the Matt Bissett fight. Would you take I mean, that? In a it's a good fight for me. Yeah. It's a good fight for me. I have everything to gain. He has everything to lose. Well, why wouldn't I take that fight? You, you know what I mean? Like, that fight makes sense. It's a tough fight. 
and I beat a UFC veteran. Where does that put me? I'm, I'm not looking at it the other way. Oh, it's yeah, it's definitely a great fight. Yeah, yeah. Just like the you know the Joe and the the Andrew yeah, fight. You know, what I mean that's a great fight. What's a great fight for you? <laughs> great fight for me. The next one. <laughs> yeah, Is there? I, I mean, there's the people one. on that thing. Do you know? Anybody. Do you know everyone on this uh, featherweight list? Yeah, can, I'll, can I'll we see it? it? I, I, yeah, let me I blow know, it up for you guys. I know quite a few of them. I and think, you train? I, 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 I think I, I'll take out. Uh, oh, wait a minute. What's your mom? What did you say? I think I take out every single one of them. Is that right? I love the confidence. All right, there we go. So we'll put that in yeah. there. Well, block me out. We don't need to see me. I don't know all Don, of them. can you see this? Uh, yeah. Right there. There you go. I don't know all of them. Can you see it? Yeah. So Matt Bissett, number one. I Bruce Boynton, number Bissette. two. Don Chanis. I don't know who the fuck that guy is. Uh, Sean Ser- Seriano. <laughs> Sounds like he sucks, but... Sean Seriano. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Seriano. Has a, his last fight was for... Uh, was against Sal, Pia- Sal Almeida, Dennis I think. Pia- yeah. Dennis Piva, who Bok- just recently Bok- went to one for He hasn't fought in a while. I don't know who those guys are. He's a combat zone kind of guy. his last fight was... Isn't that uh, Frank Forza at Bellator 85 where I fought? It I might fought, have been. I think that was But he last might have fight. fought for a combat zone fight after that. Maybe. One fight. Uh, you got Dylan Lockhart, Josh Harvey. Who fought JoJo to that um, draw? Yeah. I don't think Josh But they fights at two weight, two weight classes. So that's where it's hard because some of these guys fight at... 55. Uh, yeah, 155. So it's kind of tough um, to place them. It says and Dennis Piva fought a lot of fights at uh, Bantamweight. Yeah, and he didn't. You know, I think he had one or two fights. I think I've sparred with him before. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've trained with Dennis in Vegas. I've trained with him at Lozon. He's He's definitely been to Lozon. He's been to Lozon. Well, here's a cool thing, right? Brendan Marat and you guys, like a young, young kind of studs that made the list. Does Brend is Brendan part of? Like, does he fight? Like, train with you? You don't know him. I yeah. I was surprised. I made just because of the lack of fights I have. But I don't. I but I know where my ability is, and I think that speaks to what people think. That's exactly what you know. And and it's not like I think it's legit. When we uh, because the rankings was done in a three part: fans, promotions, and media people. So yeah, and the fans' vote was the the least percentage that went into it. So that's like to us is is a true yeah meter of of New England right there. And it isn't just the records because if you're just going for records, I mean, there's some guys that fought, yeah, not not the caliber or whatever, but it's the potential and it's what we see and and you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's. All things go Joe according says Brandon to plan. does train with us, by the way. Brandon, Brandon, just not a lot. Brandon does yeah, train with yeah, us, but not uh, a lot. Yeah. Oh, Joe Lozon, yeah. what's up, my man? Yeah, I Brandon. Remember. Brandon is under um Tyson. He's, yeah, he's managed by he's Tyson. Tyson. Yeah. He's uh, one of Tyson's guys. So. All right, so you wouldn't be against fighting someone from New England. I mean, I don't know. I don't care. I just want to do whatever is the you know whoever they want to put in front of me next. Does I Joe do like Joe? Joe manages me. All right, cool. Yeah, he's cool. he's actually out of his gym, and you know he's been there, done that. I trust him the most with making those types of decisions. Yeah. So you know, Excellent. he's always looking out for me. So yeah, uh, but. At this point of the but game, yeah, I, I don't care honestly. I like yeah. I I'm obviously I'm a fighter, so I'm just I'm hungry for a fight right now. Like, I mean, I train every day, and so I'm not taking any. Yeah. Well, should we should we like, ask Joe? What I, can't, I can't see. The set Bruce Don. All Dennis the, and what's he saying? Vix. I think those are all guys that train at our gym here and there. Yeah, they're all they're all yeah, affiliated yeah. in some way, and um, you know I don't think uh, Joe. Oh, he's Joe, saying Bavka. Vavka, okay. Vavka, yeah, I've he's a beast. Vavka, I've Vavka, Vavka, he's a beast. Uh, I mean, he's good. He's, he's come right. from behind in a couple of fights. I've seen him take him right over. Uh, the the dude's legit. Yeah. Man. Well, if but if he hasn't fought in a while. Yeah. It's good. I mean, that, and Frankie so, like, fight, at the end of the day, like, we were looking at the we're, look, we're ranking yourself against each other, and probably doesn't matter too much. We should be, you know, worried about going against people yeah. in, in, in other in other states because, like. So us working together is going to make us better. Yeah. They let the people that are divided in other states, you know, doing their own thing, not getting good sparring partners, let them come over here and, and train with us. When we train with together, we're going to wreck all these other well, states. that's what time. we kind of talked about. I mean, we have legit fighters that are going to go to the next level. Why have them fight each other here? Yeah. And, and potentially ruin their record. Exactly. When we can have them both exactly. take off and maybe fight down the line in a, in exactly. a big fight in the big stages. I mean, I'm, I'm totally yeah, on that yeah, board. Yeah. But sometimes you have... A, a, a fight that has to happen locally, and it's not it's not always the best and best. Yes, I mean now no. you know like Jimmy Manning and you got fucking uh, Conor Barry. I mean yeah. you got 
Oh, I, I mean, sometimes, it, hey, if there's some new, if there's some personal shit that needs to be settled exactly. between the state, it. And let it happen, and let's pump it up, let's get it, let's get everybody behind it. But overall, you know, let's work together to be exactly. the other. Exactly, so, exactly. You know what I mean? I, I agree with it. So, so these rankings are fucking great, but here's the idea of these rankings. Yeah. You don't want to be in them forever. I just want to be in them for now. <laughs> but, like, right now, this is cool. Yeah. Right? I'm trying to leave these fucking rankings, and I'm trying to do that as fast as And that's possible. what Joe said. Joe yeah. said, fuck these rankings. It's New England against and, everybody. Yeah, I, which I is didn't cool. even see that. And it's, you know what? It's not just New England. Good. It's not only MMA. We got fucking uh, Bare Knuckle Guy boxing this Friday yeah. night. We got Chris Saro going to represent us in uh, Mississippi. Yeah. Um, I mean, former MMA fighter, kind of Golden Gloves guy, but yep. still has an MMA base uh, training with Marcus Davis and them guys there. Uh, yep. We're killing it in all different categories. We got Fabio Charant. Traveling at LFA, LFA on, yeah. on Friday. We get a bunch of shit. Fabio goes through the Lausanne camp, uh, you know, yep. here and there. So he, Yeah, he comes in every once in a while. I haven't seen him too much for this camp because uh, we've been kind of closed down for the most yeah. part. But, yeah, he. I mean, going to LFA this weekend and what's the fight? Light heavyweight. I looked, was watching film the other guy. I was just saying that earlier. I was watching film the other guy. The guy looks pretty good. Looks Who's like that? He's gonna, oh. uh, the guy is Fabio's fighting. He's um, The guy looks seasoned. Like, yeah. You know, he relaxed kind of. But um, He's fought for LFA. Uh, Fabio's good. Yeah. Yeah. Probably hits hard though, so yeah, he does. He could. And he's, you know, he dude, can submit you too. A, a guy that big, yeah, everybody hits hard. Everybody yeah, he's hard. fucking, he's a big dude, man. He's he's been training with uh, Dennis Piver a lot over at um, Jose Santos, uh, the boxing gym yep. over there, at four hundred one. Yeah, that's that's like uh, half a mile from my house. Oh, I, really? I grew up right there. Yeah. yeah, I'm disappointed. I hit up Dennis like right when this whole Corona thing happened to kind of get the same kind of yep. training you and I. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm so fucking down. I'm like, fuck yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's like, dude, I can't. My wife. That was like a huge fucking... Well, <laughs> that happened a lot. I mean, yeah. even trying to get guests down here, because, um, you know, I, I've been interviewing people through this whole thing, you know, either by Skype or, you know, I had Johnny Cupcakes come down here. I had yeah. Connor Berry come down here. I think I had a couple other people come down here that, you know, it's a... They just, hey, yeah. I want to get out there. They, they're living their life. I yeah. didn't... And I did the same thing. I was an essential worker, so yep. I'm around it. You want to come down, come down. I mean, yep. I'm not forcing anyone not to or yep. to. Yeah. And if you want to come down, I got fucking hand sanitizer right Yeah, hand sanitizer. <laughs> I got go. shit. I had some water. I got snacks. I got water. I will bribe you into this room. You've you also been tested in Corona Free. I have been. I have been. And, uh -huh. um, you know, I would imagine I'll be tested again down the line. Um, yeah. What do you think? As far as young I've guys, been tested, Uncle. Yeah, but what do you think... Um, Corona free. What's your outtake? Do you think everyone should be tested? And oh, but don't get me into the fight. All right, we're not gonna. I don't want to talk about. Well, it. you're a fighter. You know? I'm, I'm a fighter. Yeah. But All I'm right, let me talk, let me ask you this. We'll, we'll get to a subject here with local MMA. What do you think? What do you think is gonna happen? Are we gonna have fights locally this year, or do you think we should? Uh, I think we will eventually this year. Locally. I CES, think, I, Cage no, Titans. What I think is gonna happen is. Uh, I think locally they're going to be very small cards. I think that they're going to be for no money. I think that uh, it's just to get the guys on the cusp there so they can actually start making some money. Um, I think that there's going to be a geek, big gap in amateur fights. I think that's going to be the first thing that's cut out because, one, there's no money in it, and these guys are on the cusp of like potentially having a career or being unemployed or doing something else. So it's like, why not give these guys the opportunity to go make a living for themselves? So I think what we're going to see initially is a big push of, like, the guys on the cusp get there, and, and that's what I think is going to continue to happen. Uh, I think that the guys in Connor's shoes are going to have a really tough time finding a fight because he might need two, three more. Yeah, he talked about that. Yeah. And, and that's no fault to his own. That's just... But, but yeah. on the, the other hand, too, it's like, you know what? What's gonna come? Like, how do you build the sport if you're not having amateurs fight? You, you know what I mean? Exactly. So it's, it's like you kind of need those amateurs fights to build them up to get them a following. Yeah. Well, I took, I was I interviewed Joey Beltran uh, the other day, who's been he been in the UFC forever. You know, 14, 15 year career. He's talking about the young guys. Like some fighters don't recover from having this time off. I mean, yeah. to keep them motivated, the younger fighter, yeah. like the amateurs. Because it's a hard game as itself. Just get a fight and the money that comes out of your pocket. He goes, yeah. never mind being away from the gym and I can't motivate these people on a daily basis or stuff. He goes, I, I, you know, that's what I'm worried about. I'm losing a lot of 
Yeah. The fight is mentally, you know, yeah. wanting well, to get back and, and train. Different, they're finding different lines. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you think people are getting burnt out because it's like, oh, dude, you worked this hard for this fight and then it doesn't fucking happen. Like, why would I train this hard? What, what, what I, I think Corona did, Corona Corona did for, for a lot blocks. of the guys like you was like gave you the rest you needed and built you mentally and, yeah. you know, gave you some... No, life well, no, lessons, I, I, you know. I think for like, I mean, that's just for people who decide what you really want. If you didn't, if you want to be a fighter, you have to be all in and want to be in it for you know by yourself. And you shouldn't have to get motivation from other people. I don't think so. If he's having trouble, he had to get his fighters in it because they, I don't know, maybe those guys aren't fighters and they probably weren't going to make it back. Like anyway, for me, if you really love, I like. I was talking to him. I was like, I'd like to do if the UFC wasn't a thing, and I just did martial arts. I would still want to do it and be the best I could at it every day because that's how much I like martial arts. I'm just obsessed with learning and training martial arts. I was like it a lot. So I wouldn't care if there was a fight or not. A fight. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change my perspective. I'm just happy I get to train every day. Happy I'm just on, on that. You know what I mean? Obviously, chasing the goal is there. So that's just part of it for me. Goal keeps you alive. Goal keeps right? you alive. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's still fun. I love I Don't get me wrong. I love chasing that, trying to get that next step. But I, I still just like martial arts. So I'm not dying. Right now, you know, I'm you trying. Know, to. Being able to compete and put yourself in the spot kind of like makes me at least grow. Makes me feel like I'm growing as an individual, and that's all I'm really trying to do. I'm trying to grow as an ind- individual as much as I can, and this is the outlet that I've chosen, and this is where I find the biggest rewards. There's some pretty low lows, but like this is where I find the biggest rewards, and this is where I feel like I grow the most. And, and why? Like, I, I just don't want to lose it. So it's like. I've been in this spot before when I broke my neck, not being able to do shit. I've been here. I know what this is like. This sucks. This will go just like that. You know? So, to anyone second-guessing it or getting burnt out, dude, fucking yeah. don't stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to inspire All the real you know, fighters, man. You're going to yeah, make it like, work. You just think it's you, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to find a way to train excellent. and get ready for these fights, for sure. Well, you, well, and I think that's why we linked up and we've been yeah. training is because we kind of got that same mentality. Exactly. Like, all right, yeah, we kind of got to eat shit right now. This is, like, dude, the farm's great. All the training we're getting everywhere is great. But we need more than that, you know? We need so much more than that. And we're giving ourselves as much as we can. And I, and I think that's kind of why we've been training so much together because we're kind of on that same mindset. Yep. It's like, we're not accepting this yep. as our downfall. Exactly. You know I mean, it's, it's literally, all right, we can't control this. Fuck it and move forward. Yep. And, and that's why I think we've clicked so well. Yeah. Sure, and that's the thing I say. That's like me, him, Jesse, and all these guys. Yeah. Hey, it's been great. So yeah, it's yeah. fuck it. You can't deal with it. Move forward. Yep. Exactly. Well, what are we gonna do to get ahead? Because everyone yep. else, I hope nobody we, else is training right yeah, now. Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, yeah, kind of. Well, kind of. There, you know, people are just some of them just winging it. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, some don't have the the resources to get in there yeah. as much. So some people are gonna fall. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure, and, some, and, sure people and, are like, you know, I'm t- some people, some fighters I'm talking to, like no one's really gaining ground on them out there as fighters, record yeah. wise and stuff. But some guys are gaining ground, some women and men yeah. on the back, like train. It happens even when yeah. there's not a pandemic, but this really sh- will show where the cream ro- rose. I think. And coming out of I this. think I, I wonder if I was thinking about like because I have gotten better over this over this this quarantine I think it's maybe because it's like I'm not stressed out about having a fight because a lot of times when you're stressed out right you're, you're working on peaking so you're destroying your body in different workouts you're working on your diet and you know having a really strict diet does take away from your training in the day to day you know your happiness too. it takes away from <laughs> your happiness yeah, there's a lot of things when you're training for a fight it's like hard to get better at martial arts so right now I can basically kind of just enjoy myself as I'm training hard for, for training so like Maybe that's one of the reasons why, I mean, it's been kind of, I've been liking it, you know what I mean? I, yeah. see, I'm, I can see progression because I'm not trying to... Well, well there's different play. training, too, when you're having fun. When you're not yeah. having fun and, you, and, like, when you have to be a pro, like, like, there's a difference between training as a professional and having fun training. You know what I mean? When you have to train, you have to dig deep, you have to grind, and you know you're not taking in the calories you need or want. Yeah, I think, like, I think it gets mentally food. draining. The food is the yeah. most draining part. The but like now, you, you're almost able to train and have fun again. We're able to dick around a little bit, try different things, and and uh, experiment. You know that that's where you'll see leaps and bounds. 
You know, it's like when you're in fight camp, you're just sharpening the tools you have. That's not fun. Yeah. Yeah, but when when you're able to fuck around and like make mistakes yeah. and get caught, yeah. you know how many times I've been caught doing something well, dumb. Yeah. I suppose that's you know, like being here. Talk to a lot of that. like John John Doom I've had on here a few times in here, and he speak, He's like, he goes, I don't learn anything when I'm fighting back to back always in yeah. training camp. He goes, so I don't get better. Yeah, you know what I mean. He sure. goes, I learn that's so much true. more when I'm not. So true. In, a, in a training camp. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's your perspective too, because you, you're you're goal oriented versus skill oriented. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, all right, I have a goal, I have this date, I have to make this weight, I have to fight this guy, I have to sell this show out, I have to get these sponsors, I gotta make this money, I gotta fucking hustle my dick off. And yeah. then it's like, hey man, I'm just gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna try <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> yeah. and, exactly. and you know what? You're gonna show me something, I'm gonna try it, and yeah. I'm not gonna like it, and, and I'm then, gonna try my own version <laughs> of it. And, and then there's also like, sometimes in like, I mean, I'm training consistently every day, but like, when you fight camp, sometimes you, like, get burnt out so much by, like, you know, like, the end of the week that, like, and you you have to force yourself to go training because you know you have to pay for this fight, and that's when you get these little injuries and stuff. I feel like, during since this start, I haven't seen too many people getting hurt. We've been training yeah. a lot. Every and and that was, like, I heard, like, like people worrying about that in the beginning, that yeah, there would I, be too much people going really I, hard at the beginning. Yeah, because we can consistently go at, a, like, a pretty good level every day instead of just, like, killing ourselves, yeah. and I think that's when people start getting hurt all the time. It's fight camps, not really. And, and the thing I've noticed, too, is at least training with you, at the end of every training session, we're leaving a little bit in the tank. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like, I know we can each go another round through. Yeah. I, like, I know yeah. we all got that reserve where we, we yeah. can fucking grind. But then, yeah. But, but, then, but then, yeah. But when what I tomorrow, are you getting so at? Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, we're better off training tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So. Um, question. What do you... I'll go to you first. What do you do for fun when you're not training? Like, wh- how do you enjoy life other than training? There's got to be something that kind of makes you, uh, you know, you go to when you're not fighting or I Don't do anything. drugs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't do drugs don't anymore. Do drugs anymore. <laughs> um, I don't know. I live a pretty boring life. Do you? Nothing? Yeah. I've been, uh, don't you go fish? You go anything? Uh, bike ride? Playing, you like to go look at birds? I do, anything? I, I've been doing a lot of bike riding. I got rollerblades. All right, so you do, yeah. All right, yeah. so you learn in the uh, rollerblade. Did you know how to rollerblade before you got? No, no, I was really. I'm really Did you bad. know how to ice skate? Uh, no. I'm oh, so you're trying learning things in 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 yeah. the Corona. No, uh, I've, I've been chilling with this chick. She's cool. All right, so she's. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. there, there we go. Right there, the woman makes you learn, <laughs> like try new things. Come on, John, try this. Fuck you, dude. I got, <laughs> dude, I'm not saying there's anything own. wrong with that. I got a no, girlfriend, got, man, I, and I try different things. I got rollerblades. I think I planted flowers the other day, dude. I got rollerblades on my own because I'm like, well, running kind of hurts my knee, and I still want to get some cardio in, and I don't want to run on a treadmill. It's boring, so I'm going to go around my neighborhood. There you go. And so, How are you now on them uh, rollerblades? You, I've you fallen doing? once, and I was trying to show off. I was trying to roll rollerblade up a little ramp, and I fell. Would you go on like a, a skateboard? Park or something? No, no, no. So, <laughs> where's this ramp come? So, where does ramp no, come out so, of mysteriously? Uh, it's like a ramp like this big. It's like maybe like a foot long, and it's for my grandfather who has trouble walking uh, c- to come oh, down the stairs. Right. So I was like trying to go, like try and catch a bunch of speed going around a turn. That's I'm like while Snapchat, like ooh, I'm super cool, Brink. What's up? And then I had shit on Snapchat. That's all right. Just knocked out. That's all right. That's all right. He's um, been knocked out. Wow, that's pretty time. brave of you, Don. You took the the wheelchair ramp, man. That's a big. Yeah. That's steep on you for a dude, man. <laughs> yeah. I figured you jumped off a curb or something. No, He's going no, after the I'm, not, I'm not that fucking cool, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that cool. All right, we got rollerblading from him. What do we got from I'm, you? What do you do? I'm do you go hobby. shooting and stuff? Like I'm a hobbies guy. I, don't, I mean, I, I have a shot a couple of weeks ago. I do shoot every once in a while uh, with my buddies. And I live in Freetown, so you can... Man, just gotta just be, like let it go. go in the woods and go <laughs> shoot that. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, no, I mean, I mean, like, I'm a big surfer. Um, I well, really? I used to be when I was growing up, and then like since I started fighting, I haven't honestly haven't been going too much anymore. But in the winter, I mean, like obviously I've been fight camp back to back. But I mean, I like surfing. I love snowboarding, uh, skydiving. Um, because you know I got into that when I was in the military. So hiking, anything to really get outside. I'm big, big mountain biking. I do mountain bike a lot. Actually, that's probably my biggest hobby right now this year was mountain biking. Is Especially because right? this when this pandemic thing really kicked off. Um, like, couldn't go into gyms, couldn't do, like, really train. So I picked up, I bought a mountain bike, and I just went to a ton of mountain biking. You go with people? Or yeah, I go with my brother, a group of friends, cool. you know, and uh, we go to Swansea. There's a sick mountain bike, 
bike park thing out there. Oh, is it? It's way cool. They start building like ramps and stuff. Oh, cool. And it's, sure. it's real fun. Massive workout going through Yeah, there, right? yeah. You could definitely get hurt. Definitely. That's yeah. the only thing that sketches me out. Like, I love all these extreme sports that I used to do all the time. But I'm like, if I get hurt fucking snowboarding right now and I break my collarbone, which it happens, you know, like I was with my friend last, like when I, right before I came home, my, uh, my buddy went snowboarding, special operations guy. And, you know, he's going through all this training. He was about to deploy, did a jump, broke his collarbone, didn't, you know, and then did, didn't deploy in that thing, missed a whole freaking. So it's like, that's you know, that stuff, it, and that, that could happen. That could happen. So you're like, that's yeah, like exactly. Donald, Donald that's, Cerrone. Yeah, What's he doing? Like, Taming lions and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. He does, that I guy does do that everything. Stuff. I, I kind of like, I, I'll do him a little bit here and there. I'm just hoping, like, after I'm done fighting, I'm going to go in and start doing all that stuff like, again. But. Yeah. I don't know. Cowboy's my favorite fighter. I, I like him too. I'm a big cowboy fan. Oh, that's a true, uh, true fighter. That's my true number fighter. one favorite fighter. Like, <sighs> yeah. Um, Joe, I just want to mention something that Joe mentioned. You mentioned, you know, training between you guys and Triforce. Uh, yeah. You go Triforce travels there every Saturday night. A Saturday. Yep. A lot, a lot of their fights. I know that um, Triforce has Wednesday night. I think that they have like a kind of open spa night that people yeah. go there to. Yeah, I've had that for a while. I, I think I went there when Randy was back here. I used to train with Randy. Um, me and him would go down there a couple of times a week or once a week. I think. Yeah. I think it was like Wednesday night to get some rounds down there, spar a little bit. But yeah. And that's where you talk about gyms getting each yeah, other I mean, strong. Yeah, around here, it's it's. I think here's awesome, especially when I, when I was just in Washington. The gym scene, it was the exact opposite. Oh, everybody's it was territorial everybody, and stuff. Yeah, and like everybody is trained with each other at one point, and then they break from that gym. And there's always this like oh. little bit of drama. And there's this one kid, I was, this kid, uh, coach, coach Micah B. He's like pretty good. Um, I was, that's what I was training with out there. He was good because he started to do what we were doing is bring everybody there on Saturdays. So um, I don't know if that pause was supposed to be like that. But um, he started bringing people no, there. I don't know why I did it, but uh, it's still on Saturdays, so. and that's what like Joe does. He brings you know people from all the different gyms, and I think it's really good for it. And the, yeah, I don't think there's too much drama between going to different gyms yeah. and, and up here, so it's pretty pretty sweet for me at least. Yeah, we changed with Mitch the other day. The red Mitch, guys. And, uh, Mitch and Aaron. Rebozo. He's good, man. He's gonna be good. He, Isn't about, he? How young he is? Been you know this. Dude, I'm, I'm racing Father has. Time. I'm approaching thirty. He's good, like. I'm racing Father Time. That kid's got a whole fight life ahead of him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How old is he? 20? 20? I don't think he's, I don't 20, think he's 20, even 21, 21 yet. He might, I, think, I, don't, I think he's 21. I'm sorry if I got his age. Uh, Mitch, I don't want to. He, he's 20, 21. Enough. I just saw. Like oh, just keeps getting actually, younger. I just saw them uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I went nice. and got my regiment. Uh, did you wear this on the start of the show? Or we forgot uh, that. Were no, you in that disguise? Was the show. Shit. We had Don as disguise. But shout out to regiment for the face shield. Thanks, man. I saw Aaron Hughes and uh, yeah, and uh, Mitch there, who's going down to 125. I still believe that's his plan. Yeah, he wants to clean out, smart guy, take some people yeah. out over there. I'm oh. trying to get Jesse to fight, man. Jesse Gutierrez, man. He's so yeah. fucking good. We sh- he should fight, and he's got stand up too. So I was hoping maybe because like you know this COVID thing, he's been training. I was trying to get him on if they have if they if we do have a card, I'm gonna try pushing him to get on get on it. Peer pressures. Peer pressure, yeah. I feel like peer Excellent. pressure. It's going to keep, yeah, just keep tapping them until. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, I don't know if we went out or not. I Did think it's, uh, but this is direct, so uh, I don't know. Well, you could but, probably check on your phone, right? But yeah, mine's. I, I don't even know if I can stop. My phone. No, no, no. Jesse sucks. So oh, so maybe we still are there. on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might just be the. Because this is, uh, this computer is yeah, yeah. lined in direct. But anyway, it's recording anyway. So oh. we're going to get, we're going to be, what? No, no, you're asking about hobbies. I play a lot of blackjack. I was gonna say, I totally dropped the ball. Oh, so you're a gambler guy a little bit. You do scratch cards on uh, blackjack scratch cards. I'm I'm supposed to give the fucking dealer Steven a shout out tonight on the podcast. I told him I'd do that. Fucking Joe Lozon says Jesse sucks. Have someone step up and fight him. Is that how he's how he's baiting? I think he's gonna bait him. Hey, when he calls when he calls someone's camp, a Mike Bobe goes. Hey, my guy sucks, man. You got someone that can fucking fight him. Yeah, how about Zach Cyril takes that fight at 25? Zach Cyril. Zach. Come on, Zach. Fuck Pro Zach. debut. Fuck Come on, Zach. bud. Well, guys, um, we've been going a little while, man. So um, anything last you want to say before, uh, you know, we let you go? And, uh, nah, you just know, thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah, dude, dude thanks know. for How long of a drive is it for you? It's not too bad. I, I mean, I get You're in profit. free time. I get in free time. So right by Fall River. It's not too bad. Yeah, but like 50 minutes, next, 50 yeah, minutes or right so? Yeah. yeah it's four, You're yeah. about an hour and something. I'm, right? I'm all over the place, yeah. bro. 
Because I got to go drop him off in no Mercury and shoot the plane. Dude, they come, come down anytime, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, any, I come down, man. Anytime, man. I'm here, you know, I can basically podcast any night. You know, yeah. I kick the band out if they're down at the end. I just yeah. held the show. We threaten them. You know, there's like, I had, <laughs> we, we I had, sticks who'd I had? I had all, all the guys. I got fucking defense. dice. I had the dudes from uh, your gym here, Poirier and all them guys yeah. here. Yeah. One of the tenants here, he was new. Yeah. And we were all out there talking before the podcast. And we're all just hanging. And he came up and he just stood there like, what else? And they just looked at him like. <laughs> the fuck is this dude? He scared the shit out of that kid. <laughs> he was out of here. Someone's saying, um, "Oh, Yo, someone's give messing. Andrew a shout." What is up, that Andrew? Andrew Burns? Who's Andrew Burns? He's been saying know. a lot of stuff tonight. I don't know, but what's up? He's dude? been asking a lot of questions. Well, hey, Andrew, anyone that's what's watching, up, we're gonna be getting uh-huh. going. But anyone that's watching, we'll, we'll, you know, you guys can check back and answer whatever they said or, or whatever they ask questions. Joe said a lot. Joe Lozon, I love that he was, uh, yeah, saying a lot of shit there. Oh, one last thing about Triforce, there. Um, their gym was broken into oh, the other really? night. They made a post uh, on Facebook. They had pictures of the dude that broke in. Really? Who breaks into an MMA? That's gym? what they. What that's is, what people are what saying. Is, what is there to steal? What a or badass what? mindset. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like, like he's got. You no never know who's sleeping in an MMA gym. Crazy. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> who, who I don't want to have a bed in the I don't want to say anything, <laughs> but it could have been just someone that came in looking for you know one of the you know. What they take? That Something looked in the gym. I want to check yeah, the gym like, out, and you know, I don't know. But Who uh, checks the gym out when it's closed. No, it's like, it's well, like, no, right, I mean, no, I mean, they checked say, it out when it was open and there's, cased there's, it out, and then maybe came back when they were closed. You see that a lot with yard sales. Like someone will go and scope some shit out. The shit won't get sold. They go break it. I never heard garage. that. But that's a fucking. That's a yeah. That's why you don't host yard sales at your house. Jesus. That's why you don't host yard sales at your house. Really? Yeah. What are you doing? Live by yeah, when well, my grandparents... Do them on your next door neighbor's yeah, house. <laughs> do it on their crib. <laughs> so my, my grandparents had a house in New Haven, Connecticut, and that's where I was born. And I lived there, and when they were moving out, or when they sold the house, they had a yard sale, and like they had guys come in and check out all the tools, the equipment, and then try breaking into the shit later. Joe Lozon just said they took a substantial amount of money, ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Oh my god! Wow. What? From a place that's been closed what? and just getting back on their feet. Jeez, what that's a bunch of that guy money is money dead. I'm sorry. Can I say that? Don't. That, I can't that say is that. Fucked, dude. Yeah. All right. That and they had pictures of him. He had a t- like. Uh-oh. They're gonna make him out. Yeah. They're definitely gonna. I mean, the the, the video is gonna be much clearer. They, it's already. Wow. Why are you leaving that much cash in a gym? Well, let the, you know, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it was a safe. Maybe they have a safe. Who knows? Dude, yeah. if they have a safe, then it's an inside job. Someone scoped that Here we go. Out. I don't want to talk about that. I'm saying it could have been a guy. <laughs> I don't know. Came off the I've street, never been to Triforce. Said I might think of joining. Yeah. Uh, the possibi- possibly, let's just say, whoever they catch, it's going to be, hopefully he turns himself in. Why would he do that? Because he's going to get killed. No, he's not. No. He's going to... Face fucking jail time. You think if someone are... on someone catches him, not just Triforce people, people that love Triforce. Fi- Big jail. His name's his, that thing's yeah. been shared. Everyone, people that don't even know who Triforce are, are looking for this guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? The people that should yeah. be looking for him are the fucking cops. Oh, it wasn't cash. It was uh, fifteen thousand dollars worth of equipment. That's uh, what yeah. said. Sorry, it, it doesn't that. fucking matter. That's a fuck ton of equipment. Yeah. How the hell did they get out of there? It and that's like, a that lot of gear. Time like, consuming. I mean, I bet you do. But if you think about it, if they have like those nice kettlebells. Everything. They, they, those they are like listen. Especially right now, it's like, not ca- only kettlebells. That, I know Triforce has a lot of state of the art kind of things yeah, for me to, like, for to take measurements yeah. for because they check body fat. It could have been a bunch of shit. And they that whole workout area before you get in. I've never been there. Yeah, if you go to Triforce, they have like this big like class. Yeah, uh, TFW. TFW. And I don't know if their same person owns it, but yeah, I could, they probably, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, Joe's just saying what he read on comments, but it's nice to get it out there, man. The place was broken into whatever they took. They took something of value and uh, they need to be held accountable, especially times like this. When they just, they were closed all this time, they're just opening up, they're just starting to make a little money back, getting their thing, people in there. And then you steal equipment, that yeah. they, they can't, they got to replace for the people that are just starting to come in. So it's a, it's and a mess. And so I'll tell you what, people. though, times like this is going to bring out the worst in people. It's also going to bring out the best in people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Like, they'll make out. They'll they'll get through this. Like, they'll, uh, they're like they're they going to get did. through it. But, um, all right, guys. See, that's a Any, good idea for GoFundMe. What? Someone robbed us. Fucking, we want to get. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. see. We'll 
who knows? No, somebody might I, I see a lot of bullshit bar. GoFundMe's like that. That's something. Of course, it is. There's a lot of legitimately uh, go a lot of legitimate GoFundMe's. I'm stopping. There's a lot tomorrow. of bullshit. I want a, a new fucking. I, I, I see a, a lot of bullshit. Car. Car. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, fucking. I didn't pay off. Else. Ambassador needs a new car. <laughs> Shit, just come to the show with yeah, me, right? Hey, go find me. I want to go to the dispensary this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, man. Last things, uh, you know, shout outs uh, and last words for both of you. You first, Connor. Um, yeah, thank you for having us down here. I really appreciate it. Um, shout out to um, you know, my gyms, everybody. Dude, hopefully everybody is out there who's sick. You know what I mean. Hopefully everybody starts figure out something for this and you know it's a hard, rough time but it, it is what it is you know what i mean so you know shout out to everybody stay strong and you know work out everybody work out right now. So <laughs> everybody work out work out you'll feel better get in, get in shape yep what about you don uh thanks for having me on steve um hope everyone that is sick gets unsick and um yeah Shout out to my blackjack dealer earlier. We crushed. <laughs> shout out to his blackjack yeah. dealer. Steven, my man. Jack, shout out to Jesse Goodyear. Sorry he's not here. Uh, you know, he's, he was supposed to be on yeah. come here with yeah, me. And yeah, then, you'll have to deal with him later. Yeah, I'm going to tap him out a couple yeah. times tomorrow. Fuck I'll get him back. <laughs> I'm really getting, sitting in Jesse's seat. He's getting seat another right wet willy. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Uh, I don't know if we lost the feed the last 10 minutes there, but it's being recorded, so it doesn't matter. Right. Right. Uh, it's going to go out anyway tomorrow with clips and stuff like that. So with that said, uh, we will be here back Friday night doing uh, a fight companion, hopefully on three different opponent, three different fights here. We got Ross Hilton fighting at um, Bellator. Tomorrow night, the fights? No, Friday. Friday night, night. All right, yeah. Then we have uh, Chris yeah. Saro fighting at Bare Knuckle Boxing. We have Fabio Charent. Fighting at LFA, awesome. so we have a big night. So with that said, follow us, um, and uh, we'll see you Friday night. Peace. So we out. Uh, it's fun. Awesome. Yeah.